the Douglas Heart Nature Center presents virtual field trips. Hey everyone, Miss Jen here, Education Director for the Douglas Heart Nature Center. We have three healthy habitats here at the Nature Center. We have the prairie, woodlands, and wetlands. Today we're going to explore the wetlands. So here at the Douglas Heart Nature Center, it's man-made. So that means it was farmland before we converted everything to the three habitats you see today. Back in the 1800s when pioneers started settling the area, they looked at the prairie and thought, this isn't very useful to us. So they decided to plow it up and turn it into farm fields. The woodlands they kept because they could build log cabins and other items with this resource. So at the nature center, we're trying to restore these habitats prior to settlement. Even our wetlands area is man-made, but we noticed a lot of water was flowing through our property. So it made sense to build a wetland and a pond. This is an aerial photo of the Douglas Art Nature Center. Can you tell where water was flowing through the grounds? Water was flowing in from the south, running through our grounds and pooling on the north end of our property. So it was beneficial to put in a wetland. Today, both the pond and the wetland are able to retain water, especially during heavy rains. This wetland has many important uses especially for the nearby woodland and prairie animals to get a fresh drink of water. Let's learn more about this unique ecosystem. An ecosystem is a community of interacting organisms and their physical environment. Depending on where you live, wetlands can look very different and they may be called different things like a swamp, bog, or fin. All bodies of water have different zones or areas. The littoral zone is the shallow area near the shoreline, while the limnetic zone is the open waters. The euphotic zone is water near the surface. It receives sunlight, enabling plants to photosynthesize. The bottom of the wetland is called the benthic zone. You know where all the mud and sediment is and bottom dwellers live. Most freshwater plants are found in the euphotic zone because photosynthesis can occur and in the littoral zone, meaning close to the shoreline. Wetlands serve many purposes. Would you like to play a guessing game? We will show you an item and you have to guess how it relates to a wetland, like a simile or a metaphor. A metaphor is comparing two different things without using the words like or as. For example, Noah has a heart of a lion. Let's try it with the wetlands. Okay. Let's do one together. First, what is the object on the screen? Right, a sponge. Now, think about how a sponge can be compared to a wetland. Wetlands absorb excess water caused by runoff, like a sponge would. It even retains moisture for a time. The wetlands at the Douglas Heart Nature Center act like a sponge, soaking up water to help against flooding, especially during heavy rains. Try this one on your own. Name the object. Now think how it compares to a wetland.
wetlands provide a resting place or home for animals like a bed. Many animals call the wetland home. Like dragonflies, frogs, beavers, and geese. You can learn more about these animals in our video collection. Here's number three. A wetland mixes nutrients and oxygen in the water. Thanks to weather patterns and wind, the wetlands are able to cycle, stir, or mix the water. This helps keep oxygen levels steady and regulate surface conditions. Try number four. A wetland provides a nursery that shelters and protects and feeds young wildlife. Many spring babies are born in or near the wetland, like this gosling. And these tadpoles, who will grow up to be a frog. Hmm, what's number five? A wetland filters small impurities from water. Aquatic plants play a key role in filtering out those impurities in the water. Okay, last one, number six. A wetland serves as a runway for migrating birds. Check out these Canada geese as they land on the water. Wow! Who knew a wetland was so important? Plus, it's a water source and a home to many things. Like different flora, willows, cattails, buttonbush, and more. And a home to different fauna, like fish, turtles, crayfish, insects, and birds. And many more. The wetland is full of life. Yes, both our pond and our wetlands are important to not only the Douglas Heart Nature Center, but our community. It makes up an ecosystem. Could you imagine if we didn't have these wonderful sources of water around? More importantly, it's up to you and me to help keep our waters clean. Don't worry, this isn't the Douglas Heart Nature Center's wetland, but litter and pollution like this does happen. Do you remember this aerial photo we showed you of the Douglas Heart Nature Center? And we showed you where the water comes in to the property. Now, let's show you an even larger picture of where the water goes once it leaves Douglas Heart. The water is actually flowing in from the south through the nature center grounds, to the pond, to the wetland, and out through our farm fields, and continues running north until it reaches 
Riley Creek. Making sure our water is clean is important. We're careful not to pollute, but what about people upstream from us? Did they take care of their water? What happens to our water once it leaves Riley Creek, reaches Lake Charleston, goes down the Embarrow River, and beyond? Water is the most important resource on Earth. Every living thing needs it, along with air and sun. Plants, animals, you and me, we all need it and we have to look after it. Thanks to the Clean Water Act, no pollutants can be dumped into our lakes, rivers, and streams. What can you do to help keep our waters clean? Thanks for learning about the wetlands with us. Be sure to check out one of our wetland animal videos or some of our wetland activities. See you next time.